Welcome! In this video we'll be showing a little bit about how Darkest Dungeon's turn-based combat works. So here our party has been wandering through the dungeon and has just encountered a group of skeletons. Uh, action has come to Lincoln the Crusader. He's a frontline specialist, uh, very good at melee attacks, so his attack skills that you see down here all tend to be things that target the front two ranks of enemies, such as Smite here, which as you can see allows me to target either of these two guys. So we're going to go ahead and lay into this first uh, guy, the Bone Militia, see if we can't do some damage. Oh, that was a powerful blow. Has knocked him down well under half in just one hit. That guy's not very tough. Same can't be said for the uh, for the skeletons behind him. Now the highwayman here is very versatile. He does okay in the front ranks but he also has his pistol which allows him to do ranged attacks. So we'll do just that thing here. We'll take the pistol shot and we're gonna target these uh, this back row archer, this arbalist with his crossbow. See if we can't take him out. Well you win some you lose some so that was a miss. But in this case uh, you notice the Bone Courtier back there has used his Tempting Goblet. That tends to be uh, a somewhat disruptive attack, which we'll probably see here in a moment. All right, it's back to the High Women's turn. We're going to take another shot at this. Well, he didn't eat his Wheaties today. He's messing a lot. Uh, Plague Doctor. She has a bunch of interesting skills, generally involving status effects and uh, things like that. So. Plague Grenade is a great skill here. It does basically what damage over time or poison, it's called Blight, uh, kind of a withering attack. And the neat thing about it here is that Plague Grenade can actually hit two enemies at once. You notice this plus, uh, that, that's not an either or, that means she can hit them both. So we'll go ahead and lob a Plague Grenade in there. Doesn't do much damage up front, but you notice they've both been blighted. Now that's a status effect that when it comes to their turn, uh, they'll take damage. So it's a great way to erode an enemy's health over time. Junia, uh, the Vestal, she's basically like a cleric. Uh, she's our healer, but nobody's in severe need of healing yet, so she's going to use a ranged attack she has called Judgment. Uh, see if we can't finish off this guy in the front. Now, Judgment is great because it has the side effect of healing self, if you notice at the bottom there. So Junia will actually, well, if she hit, she would get a little bit of health back herself, but she missed as well. Oh boy. Let's see what happens here. So, the, uh, the Bone Courtier has thrown his Tempting Goblet, which is full of a mysterious black ichor. Uh, just as you might feel when a black ichor hits, it's going to be stressful. So that's actually one of the neat things about um, some of the enemies in Darkest Dungeon, is that they might do more stress damage than they do physical damage. Uh, Dismas now has a great skill I want to show you, but it can only be used when he's in the front ranks, so we need to take a turn to move him to the front and set up his point-blank shot. Alright, we're back to the Plague Doctor. She has already blighted these two. Uh, let's see if we can switch to her frontline attack, the Noxious Blast. Maybe we can uh, start taking some health out on this Bone Defender. The Bone Defender has quite a lot of protection, so he is very survivable. Uh, and that can be quite a problem as he's basically blocking for the two enemies in back who are doing ranged attacks. Well, we started to take some damage, so this time Junia is going to spend a heal on uh, her friend the Plague Doc. Lincoln uh, has been displaced to the second row, but that's fine. He still has quite a number of attacks he can use. And this Bone Defender I mentioned is very tough. It's going to take a while to kill him, so I'm going to see if we can't incapacitate him for a while with the Stunning Attack. Uh, that worked as planned. Uh, it came to his turn instantly and he shook off the stun, but what that basically did is uh, allowed us to um, take him out of the action for one turn, so that was useful because his attack can land quite a bit. Okay, the point blank shot. It's now the high wind's turn. Let's see if we can't finish off this bone militia. Ooh, that one's going to leave a mark. I probably should have used that on the bone defender behind, but it's always good to kill an enemy because if you noticed, uh, Killing shifted these two other skeletons forward, and now the Arbalist was forced to use his bayonet jab, um, which is far less effective than shooting his crossbow. His crossbow can only be shot from ranks 3 and 4, so killing that little militia in front actually had a great tactical uh, benefit. Uh, Junia is now starting to feel it a little bit, so she's going to use, a, uh, use her judgment again and hope to get some side benefit of a self-heal. Uh, there we go, we got a little bit of self-heal. Oh boy, uh, now here comes that Tempting Goblet again. And that has been just enough stress to trip off the Plague Doctor. And she has become abusive. 
and this is going to have lasting ramifications on what happens for the rest of this combat and that is the name of the game of Darkest Dungeon. You don't have to worry just about their health but you have to worry about their stress as well. And now we've got an abusive Plague Doctor in the mix. Uh, I'm not sure things are going to go well from here on out, but we will show more in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you got a feel for uh, some of the neat possibilities in our turn-based combat.